Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com and welcome to part one of my tutorial series on authentication and authorization with the MERN stack. So if you don't know, the MERN stack consists of MongoDB, Express, React, and Node.js. So you should be at the very least familiar with these technologies if you wanna be able to follow along. All right, so to get started, I just wanna go over the application that we're gonna be building. So this is our MERN stack application. We have a navbar component. We have a home component, a login component, and we have a register component. So these are pretty much self-explanatory. So with login is pretty much authentication. The user provides a username and password and the server verifies if the user is who he says he is. So if I was to come here and say Pedro, so I already created these uh, accounts, so we don't need to register any of them. And give my password, log in. You can see I'm taken to my to-dos page. So my to-dos has a bunch of to-dos that I need to do. And now what this is called is authorization. Since I've been authenticated, I'm now authorized to access all these to-dos. I'm also authorized to add to-dos. So if I was just to add this, you can see I can add them and you can see that I'm also authorized to access the admin panel. So now if I was to hit F12, let's bring up the developer tools. Let's go to application and we're going to go down to cookies. Now, once a user is authenticated, what we're going to do is add a cookie to their browser. So this cookie is called the access token and this weird value that they have is a JWT token or a JSON web token. Now, JSON web tokens are used for authorization. So let's say if I was to delete this, and now if I was to refresh, you can see I get kicked out. And that's because I no longer have my JWT token. So now let's give a non-admin user so let's say I have an account called Peter, enter my password, let's log in. And you can see that Peter has access to his to-dos. So he's authorized to access his to-dos. He's also authorized to add to-dos, but you can see up here, he does not have access to the admin panel. That's because he's not authorized to access the admin panel. And if I was to come up here and let's, try to cheat the system and just go to the admin panel, hit enter. You can see that he gets redirected to the home page, and that's because he is not authorized to access the admin panel. So all that is based on the JWT token, and we'll get more into it as this tutorial goes on, but that's the basic premise. All right, so now what I wanna do is actually start setting up the groundwork. All right, so here I have Visual Studio Code open. I'm in an empty folder. So I'm just gonna open up the terminal. So let's clear it. And all I wanna do is install a couple of dependencies. So I'm gonna type npm init, and we're gonna pass the Y flag. So we're gonna get the default values for our package.json. And now we could begin installing some dependencies. All right, so the first package we're gonna install is express. And that's just gonna be our web framework. So we're gonna be using Express to handle requests and responses. Next, we're gonna install Mongoose. And Mongoose is gonna help us deal with our database. So instead of writing NoSQL directly, what we can do is create a model. And based on that model, Mongoose is gonna translate into the documents for us. So now I'm just going to install the cookie parser. And obviously this is going to be used to parse the cookie stored within the user's web browser. So when the user gets authenticated, he's going to be given a token, which is going to be set as a cookie within the client's browser. And every request afterwards, he needs to send that cookie to us. So that's what the cookie parser is for. Every request we get, we're going to look for that token. And now what I want to do is actually let's install Node Fun. 
So if you don't know what Nodemon is, it basically automatically restarts the server if we make any changes. So I already have that installed globally. If you do not have it installed, you could type npm install Nodemon and you pass in the flag of G. That's gonna install this package globally. If you don't wanna install it globally, what you can do is save it as a dev dependency. So you could get rid of the G flag and you can just say save dev and that will install Nodeman as a dev dependency. So you could do either of those two commands. I'm not gonna do that because I already have it installed globally. All right, so these are the dependencies I wanna install for now. We are gonna install more dependencies later. But now what I wanna do is head over to our package.json file and our entry point, I'm gonna change it to app.js. You can leave it as index.js and we're gonna create two scripts. So we're gonna have a script called dev and dev is just gonna execute nodemon and we're gonna pass the file to look after, which is app.js. And we're going to have a start script. All right, so those are the two scripts that I wanted to add. And let's save this. And while we're here, since we're only doing boilerplate code right now, let's use the create react app to set up our client side. So I already have the create react app installed globally, just like Nodeman. But if you do not have that installed globally, what you can do is type npm install create react app and you can pass in the global flag and that will install create react app globally within your machine. So I already done that. So once you have that installed globally, what you can do is actually use the create react app. So I can say create react app and then give it the name of the folder that you want it to create. So I'm just gonna name it client. And basically what the create react app does is it sets up an environment for us to be able to create a react application. So in other words, it does the heavy lifting for us so we don't have to configure anything. All right, so the last thing I wanna do within this video is actually create our app.js file. So I am just gonna go over to file, new file, and I'm gonna save this as app.js. And this is just gonna be our entry point to our application. So let's require the modules that we just installed. So I'm just gonna say cons express, and we're gonna require express. Now let's actually create our express application. And once we do that, we got a couple other modules we installed. We installed our cookie parser. So let's bring that into our application. Let's bring in Mongoose. And let's tell our express application to actually use these modules. So I'm just gonna say app.use and we're gonna use our cookie parser. And we're also gonna tell our Express application to use the body parser. Now the body parser is actually in Express now, so you don't have to install it as a individual module. So I can say express.json. So that's part of the body parser that we wanna use. And this is because the client is gonna be sending JSON to the server, so we're gonna to need to be able to parse that. All right, so now I wanna to connect to our MongoDB database. So I have MongoDB installed locally, so I'm gonna be connecting locally, but if you wanna use MongoDB as a service, you could do that. So first I'm just gonna say mongoose.connect and the default location if you've installed MongoDB locally is MongoDB local host 27017 and then followed by the name of the database that you want to create so i'm just going to call it mern off next we're going to pass in options so the 
option I'm going to pass in is use new URL parser. And we're going to set that to true. And the reason I'm doing that is if you do not pass this in, you're going to get a deprecation warning saying that it's no longer going to be supported later on. So that's why I'm passing this as an option to avoid that warning. And the third thing we're going to pass in is a callback. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, and by the way, if you don't know how to install MongoDB locally, I do have a tutorial on how you could go about doing that. I'll probably leave that in the description. So you could connect locally or you could connect to an online service like uh, Atlas or MLab. So now what I want to do is I'm just going to print that we successfully connected to database if everything went well. And now let's actually start our application. So I'm just going to say app.listen and we're going to listen on port 5000 and we're going to pass a callback and we're just going to print that uh, express server started. Okay. So again, I'm using port 5000 because the create react app uses port 3000. So you can't have two applications listening on the same port. So that's the reason I'm listening on port 5000. Okay. So from here, all I want to do is run this application, make sure we don't have any bugs. And in the next tutorial, we'll get into something more interesting than this. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to type npm run dev. That's going to run the dev script that we wrote in our package.json. So you can see that our express server started. We successfully connected to the database. We're getting a deprecation warning. So basically the same thing like the use new URL parser, it's telling us that we need to use uh, this right here. So I'm just gonna copy this and let's paste this within the options. Okay, so let's save this. And there you go, we got rid of that deprecation warning. Okay, so now what I want to do is make sure our create react app is working. So I'm just going to create a new terminal. And let's clear this. I'm going to change into the client folder. So remember client is where our react stuff is. So let me just bring up the package manager so you can see. So our server stuff is app.js. Everything to do with the client, aka our react stuff is going to be within the client folder. And now to run that, I'm just going to say npm start. And there you go. So our client stuff is at least set up for development and our server stuff is at least set up for development. And in the upcoming tutorial, we actually start getting into the fun stuff.